Hey there. Sorry about that introduction. I don't think anybody was watching as I was shuffling my mouth or shuffling my face with my bowl of cereal. It was a very crucial bowl of cereal. I just got back from my holly walk and uh, was really, really hungry. Was excited to have a cup of coffee, but I was also feeling very, 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 very hungry. And I don't know if you're like me. You're probably not like me. We're all unique. But <sighs> coffee on an empty tummy isn't as good as coffee on a full tummy. Uh-oh. Now I'm insecure. I'm worried I got chunks of cinnamon life in my teeth. It fell out. Piece by piece by piece by piece by piece, my hair fell out. Thank you for asking. <laughs> you're kicking me on a Monday morning. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so anyway, uh, good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Uh, my name is Ken Tracy, and uh, this is Coffee with Ken. This is a uh, little show I started uh, about three and a half years ago. It is a show uh, where I just kind of talk and ramble about whatever the heck I want to talk about. And uh, I usually, not usually, I think the show is called Coffee with Ken for a reason. While I'm rambling, while I'm talking, I drink coffee. So it's kind of a win-win. Top of the day to you. Thank you for joining. Hello, Sean. Let me do this so I can see what you guys are saying. Make sure nobody's saying any. I've seen all the Halloween movies. Uh, I watched a bunch of them this year. I watched more this year than I've watched in all my... Uh, uh, I'd rather not dive into politics, Joaquin... But I'll say there's, uh, and it's an amendment for a reason, you know, so I don't want to get too deep into it, but there's probably a reason it's there. Uh, hey, there's some jokes coming early on. Ever been to Doritos Farm? It's a cool ranch. But um bum Anyway, thank you so much for joining. As I'm saying, as I said, this, my name's Ken Tracy and this is Coffee with Ken. I'm coming at you from, uh. Naperville, Illinois, which is a town of about 150,000 people, 35 miles from Chicago. Uh, good morning, John Bradley. I usually you say good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Thank you so much, Only Bangers Life. I forgot to follow you. Only Bangers. I'm going to take a screenshot. I hope I don't lose you so I can track down Only Bangers Life and follow a him, her. It's funny. I don't know if it's a him or a her. Uh, yeah. And uh, track down and discuss. Hey, I'm from Burr Ridge. <laughs> Hello, Burr Ridge. Come on, Burr Ridge. I usually like to say people's names and uh, address you by name, but I also like to avoid politics, and it's kind of hard to do that with your name. So you're just going to be Burr Ridge to me. Uh, uh, you tell me, Eric. We're all unique, though. I'll promise you that. All right, Stephanie. Uh, anyway, it's a show about me talking and rambling and I don't, know. I don't know what else it's about, but it's also a show about me drinking some coffee. And with that in mind, I got a nice hot pot of coffee here. I drink, I make my coffee uh, out of uh, a Mr. Coffee. I don't know. They're only like 20 bucks. It's amazing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you, John Bradley. Uh, they're amazing. You know, there's almost nothing that gives you more value for 20 bucks than a coffee maker. I mean, obviously you need to buy the grounds and you need to buy the filters. Uh, one of the competitive things, these filters, you get like, I don't know, 200 for like two bucks. Last me, I don't know, two thirds of a year. It's a good deal, good value. So uh, I'm gonna grab my phone, go into my living room where I was sitting a moment ago for those that are just tuning in, uh, you are fortunate to not tune in at 8 o'clock sharp. I was shoveling down some Cinnamon Life cereal, uh, which is almost one of my favorite cereals. And you kind of... Uh, thank you so much for following the host, Woody uh, Pelez. You've never had coffee. Well, I'm going to have a sip for you. It's okay. You, If you don't like coffee or you don't want to do it, don't do it. But I really enjoy it. Oh, it's hot. This is a combination pumpkin spice from Target and a Sumatra. And it is a, uh, uh, 
I've been addicted to pumpkin spice over the last several months. And uh, there was a little bit of pumpkin spice left in my bag. And there was, well, go get some tea. My mother grew up in Scotland, so I'm very used to drink a whole heck of a lot of tea. Uh, tea, I think, is a little healthier for you if you're sick. If you have like a sore throat or a congestion. Which, by the way, I almost never get sick. Uh, no, I don't take creamer. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, it's not that interesting. I get asked it all the time. And for those that tune in, you don't want to hear the story about it. But I believe that they have it's made. It's a good topic, though. Having coffee with you this morning. Thank you, Lois. I'm going to say it again. I think small changes in our life make huge impacts on uh, who we are and who we become. And I think, and I say it a lot, a lot of people, like if they're feeling like they need to lose some weight, they'll go to a, sign up for a gym and hire a personal trainer and work out real hard and, you know, be really sore and never work out again because working out's not that fun. Good morning, Dennis. Um, but I think small changes over time, you know, if you're struggling with your weight, maybe do something small, go for a walk around the block once a day. And then after a month, make it two blocks or something like that. But for me, I realized that I drink a lot of coffee. And if I put in cream into every cup of coffee I drink, and I posted a video about this last night. So if you watched it, I apologize that I'm being redundant. But people always ask, and I think it's an important message. Um, you know, if I drink six, eight cups of coffee a day, let's say, uh, that's six or eight splashes of cream. Uh, you know, you think about the calories, I don't know, it's 100, 200 calories a day extra, you know, and you do the math on that and it's probably like 20 pounds at the end of the year. And it's just a ridiculous amount of calories you got to burn off just for taking cream. Uh, and I realize again, small changes over time make a big difference. I struggle with some changes. I like to eat whatever the heck I want. Uh, I used to drink a lot of alcohol. I stopped drinking alcohol, I don't know, just over a year ago now. Last October, uh, I realized it wasn't making me happy. <laughs> I realized I was using it to cope, to drown my sorrows, to numb the pain. <laughs> what I realized, though, it was also numbing the good stuff in me. And there is a lot of good stuff. And there's a lot of good stuff in you. And I think if we're always drunk or high or <laughs> whatever, uh, you know, that good stuff's covered up. Yeah, you know, it might not feel the, um, I don't know, might make you feel better when you get home from a hard day of work to crack open, a, have a whiskey or a whatever, a beer or whatever you drink or a glass of wine or six. Uh And stick to small changes when you're a creature of habit. Uh, well, you do it one day at a time, post setters. We're all, I'm a creature of habit. You, if suddenly, once it becomes a good, read the compound effect. Read the compound effect. I think it'll change your life. It's about small changes over time and implementing good habits. Uh, implementing good habits. And uh, that's, that's the key. You bring it up saying you're a creature of habit. Make it a habit that don't. So, don't finish off the cream in your fridge, but don't buy it next time. Yeah, it is a book uh, written by the guy that read, uh, wrote, or that founded Success Magazine, uh, Darren Hardy, I think. It's a super, good morning, Four Val Life. It's a super easy read, which I enjoy. Uh, and again, it's just about the simple little changes you make over time and how much of a difference. Uh, just look just like you. Uh, I don't know what you mean, but uh, let me have a little more coffee. Mm. Yeah, super easy read. Uh, I mean, I probably read it 10 times. There was a period a few years ago, it made such a difference in my life. I was sending it out to anybody. I don't know why. <laughs> sending, I sent out like 20 books to anybody on social media that wanted a copy because I thought it would make a difference in their life. Uh, I don't know, made me feel good. <laughs> but again, uh, just a really good book. In a, You just get your habits changed. And again, in a month, you'll suddenly be enjoying coffee black and you'll wonder why you ever had it with cream. And if I were you, I'd just finish off the bottle of cream you probably have in your fridge. And next time you go to the store, don't buy it and drink a cup of coffee black the next day. 
and then do it again the next day. Because again, if you're trying to lose weight and you're overweight and you don't want to go on a walk that day because you're used to, I don't know, laying on the couch and not going on a walk, start small, start small. Start small would be my thing is how you do it. And again, I think, uh, you know, there's no reason to give up cream if you're not struggling with your weight. But if you, I, I do the numbers, run the numbers, think how much cream you put in each cup of coffee. And if you drink two a day or three a day or whatever, there's still an amount of calories. It's still going to add up to, I don't know, a few hundred over a week, which is three or four or five miles of running. So uh, do the numbers and I bet you'll see the sense that it makes. And for me, I probably just was ran out of cream one day and three weeks into not smoking change is difficult. Woody, I smoked for a year and a half. I appreciate you bringing that up. Cigarette smoking was very challenging for me. I smoked for only, thank you for following the host. I appreciate it. I smoked for about a year and a half. I uh, am a realtor. I've been selling homes for 17 years. Uh, <laughs> it's funny, I was just walking Holly and I think I was tricked into believing it can be a full-time job. Good morning, Pink Sunshine. Uh, so if I just work harder or knock on more doors or prospect more, I'll be a super successful realtor. And there's been points in my career where I've been busier than I could handle. And on average, year over year, I do okay. But there's months that are really, 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 really slow. And right now is a slow time in the market. And I'll bring it back to smoking. Sometimes I get distracted. Right now is a really slow time in the market. There's almost no homes for sale in Naperville, Illinois. It's a town of 150,000. Maybe five new homes will come on the market today. But there's five, and I'm making up these numbers, but they're probably sort of true. There's like 5,000 realtors in my town. So only one out of a thousand is putting on a new listing today. And I'm not one of those thousand. And uh, I used to always blame myself because I'm a little codependent. Uh, I thought I could fix, change, save everything. Uh, I wasn't, uh, you know, I didn't go to church. I'm not what I've never been a real big believer, but I've been going to church this year because I've been going through challenges. And uh, if nothing else, I feel uh, it, you're on Sundays for that hour, you're in with a bunch of good humans trying to improve, feel better, improve their lives. And uh, I'm going to bring it back. I got to rewind because I want to get back to smoking. So anyway, I was a realtor for 17 years and was told, hello, I like Bruce Willis, was told it could be a full-time job. This is me rewinding what my thoughts, was told it could be a full-time job, realized it couldn't be a full-time job all the time. I'm going to finish that. I ran into a realtor the other day. She's older than me. I'm 54 and she's been doing it for longer than me. I've been doing it 17 years. I asked how's business. She goes, oh, it's slow right now, but I got a couple things coming after the first of the year. You know, a couple things coming might be 20 grand in earnings. I'm, you know, something like that. 20 grand in earnings, a good chunk of earnings, but I'm still young and not young. I'm 54, but I'm, I'm age is just a number. Uh, but full of energy. Even if I have money coming after the first of the year, that's six, seven weeks away. What am I supposed to do for the next six or seven weeks? Twiddle my thumbs? So anyway, um, keep rewinding. Keep rewinding. I was, uh, I'm a realtor. And there's a couple periods in my life I've realized I was too slow and I needed cash, so I'd wait tables. When you wait tables, a lot of waiters uh, smoke cigarettes. They go on smoking breaks. And... <laughs> Um, I would be in there, not a smoker, and they'd all go out and take a smoking break. And <laughs> I'd be jealous, going, hey, I want to take a break too. <laughs> so I'd go out and take a break with them. And they're all sitting around smoking. Uh, you know, I was a runner, cross-country runner, track runner all my life. Uh, smoked pot, but I never really smoked cigarettes. And uh, uh, bummed a cigarette, and then bummed another. And then two weeks later, I was feeling cheap bumming them. And I'd buy a pack, and then I was in trouble. Uh, uh, then I was in trouble. Um, then I was in trouble, because I was buying cigarettes. And suddenly I was smoking. I never became a big smoker, uh, but I was buying a pack probably every other day and smoking them. So I don't know how many that is. Uh, or maybe two or, two or three packs a week, I think. And, you know, I hear there's people out there smoking like five packs a day. <laughs> But even at two or three packs, I could feel it in my lungs. When I got up, uh, I'd want to smoke. Uh, 
I think the biggest thing with addictions isn't the hangover. It's not the hangover from drinking. And I think this is important. It's the constant craving, the constant calling, the constant have a beer. Or for me, it was, it, when I was smoking, it was the cigarettes. You know, I almost didn't want to have a, I woke up, there was a part of my brain going, where's the cigarette? And I was only a light smoker. It was never a big problem. And um, uh, I think that's the, I think a lot of people think the problem with addiction is the hangover, the day after you drink and you feel like crap. And yeah, that's not good. But I think the real demon in it is the craving, the temptation, the calling, the longing, the desire to have a beer, have a cigarette, have, smoke some pot. When am I going to have my next hit? When am I going to grab, hey, I'm getting low on this beer. Maybe I should go get another one. Uh, a priest or a counselor. I've thought about both. I've thought about both. I'm 54. I, and somebody asked me about a job. Uh, I'm considering it. I need it. I need it. You know, I need money. I'd love to do this full time, to be honest with you. Um, I think for the first time in my life, I was a stockbroker for 10 years. I bounced around doing random things for a couple of years. And then I became a realtor and have been doing that for 17 years. Uh, always commission jobs, always looking for your next paycheck. Hello, Sheila. Thank you for joining. Always defining your value by how much money you make. And not feeling good, not feeling warm and fuzzy inside. And I'm going to have a little more coffee. Mm. I'm a guy that values feeling warm and fuzzy inside and doing good things. Yeah, money's good. It's better than not money. Being Money doesn't buy happiness, but being broke sucks. Because I've been rich and I've been broke. Money does. I've certainly been sad, felt you know, stockbroker, realtor, you're sitting on money more than us, I bet. No, I, I mean, I really wouldn't lie about it. <laughs> I wouldn't lie about it. Uh, I've had eyes. I've had really, I was funny. I was walking down the street and there was a very fancy car that drove by and I bought that car, I, the car that drove by. Uh, it was 1995 and I paid cash for it. I was like 27 years old and it was about, you know, $100,000 at the time. It's probably like 250 now and I paid cash for it. So I've had money, but at that time, hello, Burleson. And uh, I've had money. And again, money doesn't buy happiness because even in those wealthy times, uh, there were serious depression and anxiety and bad moments. And no, well, eight, I, I bet you don't have it, eight millimeter. And I don't mean to be mean. I'm doing well. I bet you don't have it. I bet it makes it eh, not that comfortable because if you're not comfortable within... Uh, Whatever. Uh, if you're not comfortable within, it's kind of like the grass is always greener. People think, oh, if I move to California, um, I'm certainly not a saint. Uh, <laughs> they think if they move to California or if they move to the beach that they're going to be happy. That, oh, the problem with their lives is it's snowing outside or it's cloudy or it's rainy or it's windy or it's hot or it's cold. And they think if they move somewhere uh, that they're going to be happy because they'll be laying on the beach. <laughs> and life and peace and joy and happiness isn't about being on the beach, you know? Um, yeah, so am I. Uh, isn't about being on the beach. And it's not about moving because the grass isn't really greener. And the reason it's not is because you bring you with you. You bring your thoughts, your either your love or your joy in your heart or your hate and your anger in your heart. And yeah, you bring yourself. And if you're bringing an angry, anxious, depressed, sad, bitter person to the beach, you're going to be an angry, depressed, bitter, sad person on the beach. Well, eight millimeter, you do you. Maybe you should be doing one of these videos because you seem to disagree with me. Uh, the problem goes with you. No matter. Yeah, no, I've done it. I've done it. I moved to California. You know, I've sat at the beach. I've had the money. I've done the drugs. But all you're doing is trying to bury your thoughts and your feelings and your, you know, you. You got to deal with you and learn how to be okay with you and be okay with you being alone. Or people think if they get married or they find a girlfriend or a boyfriend or, you know, 
I don't know, they buy a new car, they buy a new house, suddenly everything's going to be great. Uh, uh, everything's going to be great. And uh, again, you got to deal with you and oneself and um, whatever. So uh, that'd be my thought for today. I do these shows at 8 o'clock every day, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Let me be honest. I don't know what I'm talking about. All I know, an 8mm, again, you do you, and you might be right, and I might be wrong, honestly. But I, I, I enjoy doing these shows, and it seems people enjoy watching them. And I've been going live at 8 o'clock every day uh, for the last, like, week and a half. And somehow, some way, I'd like this to grow. I hope my videos are entertaining. Hope sometimes they're a little bit educational. Hope some people even find a little bit of inspiration from them from time to time. Because again, I've had very high highs and very low lows. And for some reason, I seem to have an ability um, to, to, uh, to express my st stuff. I like to call stuff my stuff. Um, in a way that resonates with an audience. I'm very open. I'm okay with sharing. I don't know if that means I'm insecure or secure, but either way, here I am. And uh, again, I do it at eight o'clock. I hope you're enjoying this. It takes some minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. I appreciate you saying that. And again, I'd encourage you guys to say, there's so many critics out there in the world and so many people willing to disagree. And usually the people that disagree are the loudest or the haters are the loudest. And I'm not, 8 millimeter. I'm not talking to you. I love you. I appreciate you joining. Um, but there's so many people, like somebody said something about, hey, you got a mustard stain on your shirt. Everybody, yesterday, and honestly, it was a picture of the sun. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I wanted to do a video about it. The person pointed out, called it a mustard stain, and it was the sun. <laughs> and it's like people are so willing to, hey, to find fault or find blame or point fingers. And I've done it. I'm not saying I'm a better. I, I've done it. I've been there. I pointed fingers. I've blamed other people. I've moved. I've looked for the grass is greener. I've cracked the bottle. I've smoked the joint. I've done the things. And I'm just saying, uh, life is better and the world is better if we stop pointing fingers and we start cheering people on and applauding and saying, way to go. <laughs> Good job. Because you never know, you know, no, you know, I run around with a big smile on my face and I think I'm one of the, I wouldn't trade my life with anybody. Uh, but there's some dark times. There's some dark times where, uh, Matt, when you said uh, what you said, you, that you take inspiration from me, builds me up. And you don't know when you say that to somebody that they right might really need it at that moment that they might really be hurting inside and the longer i do this the more i realize everybody's got issues uh everybody's got issues it could be a death in the family a job loss uh, relationship struggles personal issues or what have you we're all facing issues and the world's going to be such it would be such a better place uh, when we had less criticism and less finger pointing and more cheering on and encouraging. And uh, a little, this is my dog, Holly. <laughs> She's been a little shy today. She's usually my co-star. She's a good girl. I'm lucky to have her. But uh, anyway, so I hope you follow my page. I hope, oh, I know. No, no, it's cool, 8 millimeter. And again, I'm not, I, I love you and thank you for chiming in. I appreciate you. Cheers to you. Uh, but anyway, just my thoughts. And again, I'm not always right, uh, but I talk anyway. And again, that, it's interesting. I think that's maybe the charm of my videos in that I might say things that others might not say. And, you know, I'm not always right. I usually am right. I'm usually early. I used to, I said I was a stockbroker. I'm watching CNBC over there. I, uh... Yeah, I'm usually right with my predictions. I'm just early. And, hey, thank you, Woody. Thank you for joining. I hope you uh, follow my page. And when you're early, that's the same as being wrong a lot of times. It's early in leverage, like when you're buying options or whatever. So you think the market's going up, you buy, you buy it, and you sell it before it does, and then it goes way up. But anyway, I don't want to get into the market. But uh, 
Uh, you want to get out of being a realtor. Most people want to get into it. Uh, send me a message. It's weird on this platform. You can't send messages. I guess you don't want to be stalked by 8 billion people unless they follow you. Um, I'm not from New England. I'm actually uh, from the Midwest. I grew up in Downers Grove, Illinois, which is a town uh, about 10 miles that way <laughs> from Naperville. But, uh, you know, I could talk all day. Uh, give me a cup of coffee and give me some people to talk to. It's easy for me and I enjoy it. And uh, I like sharing my experiences. And again, I hope some of the experiences uh, uh, resonate with you guys. Uh, but it's Monday morning. The sun is shining here. Uh, hello there, two-girl mom from Alabama. I just, well, no, I'm a three-girl dad. <laughs> I have four children. That's kind of strange. It's kind of cool. Did a video last night about how I'm never going uh, never gonna to regret having more kids. <laughs> but anyway, I don't want to get too distracted. I want to thank you guys so much for watching me uh, today. I hope you follow my page. I hope you find some inspiration uh, or some entertainment or a laugh or a chuckle or it makes you feel a little bit good or not alone because being alone, it's okay to be alone. It's just not okay to feel alone. And there's some wisdom in that. I, I don't know exactly what it is. Uh, just recently, I've learned to, to be alone but not feel alone. And I think that's a really, really important thing. I think I used to bring a needy, wanty, codependent, bad version of myself into relationships. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Relationships are hard enough when everyone's fully committed and healthy. If you're like a needy, wanty, lonely version of yourself and you get in a relationship, you're going to be that clingy, needy person and the relationship's going to struggle. And just recently, I'm learning to be okay with who I am. Uh, yeah, Lynn, I appreciate you. Hope you follow my page. You'll feel a little less alone because I do a lot of videos, post a lot of videos. I go live at 8 o'clock every day. And uh, enjoy that. And it's something we're all working on, Lynn. You're probably not going to figure it out today, you know, but we're all works in progress. Read uh, the compound effect. Get a little bit better every day. Do a little. I appreciate you, 8 millimeter for all the likes you're sending me. I appreciate. And there's 53 people watching. That's a fairly good crowd. I hate to tune you guys out, but I'm trying to wrap it up and put a bow around it and tighten it up and get us all on our days. Um so I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I so appreciate you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, follow my page. I hope you like my videos. I hope you tune in tomorrow at 8 o'clock because I'll be here drinking some coffee, uh, talking with you guys again tomorrow at 8 o'clock. I'd like to grow this. Uh, it's the first time in my life I felt I was really, I don't know, being productive. Not being productive, but being helpful that this meant that this meant something and it feels good uh to do something that you think is important and means something so anyway i'll leave you with that i hope you're doing well i hope you have a wonderful wonderful month yeah wonderful wonderful monday hope you're loving yourself i hope you are forgiving yourself and uh, as always hope to talk to you soon bye-bye